the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and Greg Schiano, uh, five and eight last year, actually went to a bowl game with a five and seven record because of how good the school's APR is, uh, and will continue to be, I would imagine, so long as he is there. Post game win expectancy four point one two and seven point eight eight. That means this team was closer to four and eight than they were to five and seven, and. It does make sense when you look at the screen, when you look at this spreadsheet, and you see all that red. This team was not explosive. They couldn't stop explosive plays. They were not efficient on offense. And the only saving grace really was the defense and the fact that the team did not beat themselves. Right, number 43 in turnover margin, number 32 in penalties per game. Uh, The team was okay. Projected SP Plus record this year from Bill Conley is 4-8. and And, you know... I I don't see four wins here. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't see it. Uh, you've got number 56 in the country as far as returning production. A lot of that's on offense, 74%, but on defense, 55%. And, of course, again, defense was the saving grace. Defense is what got them to that bowl game. You're starting out the year on maybe not the right foot. You play at Boston College. I think that team's going to be pretty good. You play at Temple in week three. Uh, Temple is is not a good football team, but that's another winnable game, but you have to play it on the road. I, I mean, this is it's a tough schedule. This is a tough schedule. Let's start off with the offense. Nothing has really worked in two seasons under the offensive coordinator, Sean Gleason, other than some trick plays back in that 2020 season. And he tried to run some stuff last year. Had a little bit of success with it here and there, but, eh, you know. Uh, the quarterback, Noah Vidral, returns at quarterback, but he was number 111 in total QBR in 2021. Like, I would imagine Simon or uh, Wimsat could probably start this year. Uh, the offensive line is replacing five of their top six. They got four transfers coming in. They signed seven high school offensive linemen in this class. Like, it, they understand, at least Shiano gets it. Like, you got to get better on the line of scrimmage. Uh, the transfers, Harris from Syracuse and Ryan from West Virginia, uh, they should help a really, really unproven wide receiver core. The running backs, uh, Manon Guy and Young, complement each other really well in Gleason's scheme. Like, I, I I, think there's at least some kind of promise here to, to be better than they were last year, but my gosh, there's really only one way to go from the number 124 offensive PPA per drive team in the country. I mean, it's... You don't get much better than that, or much worse than that. Uh, the passing success rate was number 113 in the country. Rushing success rate, number 84. I mean, just, ugh. Um, Moving over to the defense, like, this is where they were good. Uh, you got new defense coordinator, Joe harris Zemiak. Correct me in the comments. <laughs> Correct me in the comments. I am so awful at some of these names. Uh, he was the co-DC and safeties coach at Minnesota for the last two seasons. Uh, we all know that this is Shiano's defense. He is a defensive guy, so he he is the one that really plans this thing. Uh, the defense, you know, again, great last year as far as it was the one thing that this team could really hang their hat on. I'll say that. They were number 19 in defensive field position, number 40 in points per scoring opportunity, number 39 in rushing PPA. Uh, linebacker is thin and inexperienced. You got 11 players with 227-plus snaps returning. So you do have some experience of guys that have been in that system. Like, you, if nothing else, Rutgers has maybe the best pass rush uh, in years this year behind the defensive end, Lewis. The secondary is going to be maybe the strong unit. Uh, You've got the most experience right there. And yet, you know, projected favorites in two games? I mean, just just not great. And you've only got three toss-ups. Again, toss-ups are games that are projected to be within one score. Let's uh let's look at the keys to the season. The win total is sitting at four and a half, but it's at it's not at a lot of books. I don't know why this win total is not uh, everywhere right now. Like uh, something, I don't know what's going on here. Is is what I'm saying. I'm not sure exactly what's happening, but uh but yeah, the win total sits at four and a half. It is juiced to the under at minus one twenty. Keys to the season, you got to find some explosive plays. Like, they were only number 28. Uh, or no, sorry, they were only 28. Um, I will say it right in a moment. They only had 28 plays of 20-plus yards in non-garbage time last year. That's number 125 in the country. If you swap to Wimsett, like, 
is that going to work? Like, it, is is he going to be the guy that really sparks some, you know, some explosive plays on offense? And we'll see. Defense uh, only has 55% returning production and a new DC. You got to imagine that Shiano's defense will be fine, but that's a lot to deal with when you got at Boston College, Iowa, and Ohio State in the first five weeks of the season, right? Uh, the fundamentals were good here. You know, number 43 in turnover margin, number 32 in penalties per game. It, there's just... There's just nowhere near enough talent there right now. Now, I know that Shiano is working on that, but the losses that they took last year, I I don't see a lot of room for improvement. Last year almost felt like a miracle to get some of those wins. I've got them going 2-10. and 10. Could I see them winning another game? Could I see them maybe getting up to 4? Yeah. Could I see them getting to 5 or even bowl contention? No, I don't think so. Uh, I mean, this is just a brutal, brutal stretch once they get into conference play. Uh, you've got Iowa at Ohio State, Nebraska. Then you get a bye week, and you play Indiana, which I think they could reasonably beat Indiana. But after that, at Minnesota, Michigan, at Michigan State, Penn State, at Maryland. Like, uh, Maryland, they that was, that was a team that maybe they could have hung with last year if they had any hope of an offense. Maryland's offense is going to roll this year. And you have to deal with those fast, fast wide receivers in the last game of the year after playing Minnesota, Michigan, Michigan State, and Penn State all in a row. Like, it's That's a disaster. So this schedule did not set up well for them. I, I've got them at 2-10. and 10. Got them at 2-10. and 10. I wish good things for the State University of New Jersey. Um, but it is what it is. You know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.